welcome or welcome back to my channel History Books. I'm Camilla and today I'm bringing you my nonfiction November TBR. We're halfway through October and I've kind of been preparing for the last few weeks and then I saw that Olive, from a book Olive, who kind of is hosting this uh, month challenge read it on, she posted the four words for the inspiration for this nonfiction November in 2022. I was gonna say not to 2021, my god. Uh, and she just posted some like recommendation and a TBR so I thought it was a perfect time for me to post mine as well so I've thought about the words and how some of the books I wanted to read fit in there and then new books that I've also found that I think would be a great addition to it. I've tried to keep it to about 10 books but let's be honest probably gonna go into like 15 books and we'll see but I know that I'm not gonna realistically get to all of these I'm hoping I'll get to at least eight maybe ten books total in the month uh because i'm also planning on doing a uh, nano remo so we shall see how that goes if i'm reading and writing obviously full job i'm actually going to be going back to the office more in november as well so it's gonna be a busy month but i'm hoping with full of you know wonderful things so let's get started the first word theme inspiration for nonfiction november in 2022 is record. So at first, record, the first thing that came to mind was music. I'm not a huge fan of reading about music. And then um, I kind of, I was like, I'll Google the, what the word means and then I'll see what the definition. <laughs> and obviously it's one of the first one is, you know, a record of something, something that's been written, an account, you know, something like that. And I saw in the most recent video that all they recommended maybe some, some, books on like sports journalism and I thought I have the best book for that and it's good because I want to read some of the books that I have on my physical shelves. So the first one is Get Her Off the Pitch, How Sport Took Over My Life by Lynn Truss. So this is about how Truss was a sports journalist and basically how that went for her and it's also a bit about being a woman sports journalist so I thought it fits also with, I love to read about kind of more feminist issues. So I think I'm going to really manage to read this one, can be one of my priorities and I'm very excited. I bought this recently so I'm always really happy when I go for a book that I've bought recently because it feels like, you know, didn't just buy it to put it in the shelf. So I'm very excited for this one. The second one that I'm thinking of reading is What White People Can Do Next from Allyship to Coalition by Emma Dabiri. I also bought this recently <laughs> and I saw Dabiri talking at the Edinburgh Book Festival and that's why I bought this book. It's really short and I'm hoping I'll just be able to read it maybe on the train to work or something. Uh, it says stop the denial, stop the false equivalences, interrogate whiteness, interrogate capitalism, denounce the white savior and abandon guilt. So I think it'll be a really good one. Another book that I'm really hoping to get to in this category theme is Taste by Stanley Tucci. I feel like it goes with record because it's kind of a record of his life, but like through food. I have a whole in library of an audiobook coming out soon. So I'm hoping that, you know, it comes out in time so I can read it in November. And I think it'll be really good. I'm really a big fan of his. So yeah. That'll be nice. There's an other audiobook I'm hoping to listen to, but you know, we'll see because this is the fourth book in this category. <laughs> it's called Girls on Film, Lessons from a Life of Watching Women in Movies by Alicia Malone. I'm actually about to maybe start, I don't want to give too many details, but I'm probably about to start a PhD in film and especially film and feminism. So I was Googling some books and this one came up and I thought, actually that sounds really cool and I feel like, you know, film, is a form of record. We'll see if I have the time, but it's one I definitely want to read in the next couple months anyway. The next category is element. And for element, the first two things I was thinking about was one, an element on like an oven, <laughs> which I feel is really bizarre, but you know, like something that goes red hot. Like, yeah, that was kind of what. And then obviously the other is element like of nature and of um, chemicals, you know, components and stuff like that. So I've decided that I think I'm going to be reading The Salt Path by Raynor Wynn. I've been wanting to read this one for a while and I feel like while it's not an 
salt is not technically an element. I feel like it goes with like sodium. Sodium isn't salt, you know, like that's where I went to that, um, in that logic. So I think that would be really good. I really want to read something kind of like nature-based. I think that'll be a good one. Another one that I have an audiobook hold at the moment, so I'm, if it comes out in November, I'll read it in November, is Seed to Dust, A Gardener's Story by Mark Hammer. So I'm not entirely sure how it fits in element, but it feels like it's about nature. So it feels like it's about the elements, you know, something like that. And it sounds really good. Again, it kind of goes with the theme of nature. And finally, the last one, and this is a bit of a stretch, but the last one, the element of water is <laughs> the bookshop that floated away by Sarah Henshaw. I feel like it has an element of element in it, you know? So I've bought this recently. I only remembered it when I was picking out the books to do the video and I was like, oh my God, I bought this recently and I really want to read it for in November. How does it fit in? Will I have time? I do not know, but I want to mention it today. The next theme slash word of inspiration is border. And for that one, obviously immediately thought of countries, borders, um, refugees, you know, all that kind of crossing of uh, invented borders, obviously, in terms of countries. So the first one that I thought about was The Good Immigrant, which is an essay collection edited by Nikia Shukla. I bought this recently as well. Well, I love uh, nonfiction recently. <laughs> I have really high hopes for myself. So I've been wanting to read this essay collection for a while. Even if I read just one or two essays, I think that'd be really nice. I don't know if I'll be able to finish this book because I have a lot on my plate for November, but I think I'd really like to dip into this one at least. And I think it'll be a really interesting one. Obviously, I am the daughter of a refugee. I am an immigrant myself. So I feel like there's so much about that that I can relate to and that I can understand. So I, I, I'm really keen to read those stories, especially firsthand experiences. The second book for Border that I was thinking about was Feminist City by Leslie Kern. So I guess it's not technically to do with border, but I feel like talking about cities, about landscape, about urban development kind of goes in my mind with border as well. So I've been very keen to read this one when I bought it from Rebirth Bookshop in Edinburgh. And I think that would be a really good time to read it. And yeah, it's quite short, so I'm hoping I have time. Everyday women struggle with problems created by cities built by men. This is revealed in the intersectional social inequalities that are embedded into our streets, homes, and neighborhoods. In Feminist City, Leslie Kern exposes those deep flaws and offers an alternative vision of urban planning. It is a time to dismantle what we take for granted about city life and ask how we can build more just and, sustain and sustainable environments. So I feel like this is very much in the themes of stuff I want to read, but also to educate myself about urban planning. I think it's so interesting. I grew up in a city and I think this would be a really cool way to look at actually the problems that potentially that I, maybe I've never even thought about, but also at what would make it more of a feminist city and more of a intersectional feminist and egalitarian place to live in. Finally, the fourth and last word for Nonfiction November in 2022 is secrets. And I guess it can be... Um, interpreted in so many different ways so one of the ways and i saw a book that i've been meaning to read i've had this book for a very long time so it contrasts with all the books that i've literally just bought like last month uh, it is invisible women exposing data bias in a world designed for men by caroline criado perez and i kind of went with secret invisible i feel like it it connects in that way so that's why i picked this this is again a bit like feminist city it's very much like more of a slightly academic and potentially longer. It will take me longer to read, like it'll be harder to read and maybe follow, especially because a lot of this is about government policy, medical research, technology, which I'm not a very sciencey person, but I really want to learn and, and find out more about it. So I think this is going to be a really good one. I have found an audiobook of this. I may do like a bit of listening and reading so I think that'll help me <laughs> get to it faster. And finally the second book that I want to read under the theme secret is Islands of Abandonment Life in the Post-Human Landscape by Cal Flynn. I really want to read something Scottish for um, this nonfiction November and this is a book that I've been meaning to read. I feel like it's won prizes and 
it's been on my radar for a while and I found an audiobook of it so I really want to get to it and I feel like Islands of Abandonment like it's been abandoned there are some secrets maybe some mysteries you know behind like those places and what they've once were and what they've become so I feel like it tied well with the word secret in that way and yeah I'm so excited for all of these there's a couple of more books I want to just mention as well and I know that I will not finish those because let's be honest I have way too many books on this list already but the first one is Shadow City A Woman Who Walks Kabul by Taran and Khan the, this has been a book I believe I started it last year I'm about halfway through it reads really slowly obviously it's a very personal account of a woman visiting um, Kabul and the differences in time and also to look back after Kabul has been basically destroyed and it's really really good but very slow to read I know I will probably not finish this this month but I would like to dip back into it and also I just wanted to highlight it again and maybe to hold myself accountable a little bit I'm pretty sure this is one of the books I told myself I would go back to this year and try to finish but here we are with two and a half months left of the year and I haven't touched it at all so yeah that'd be good to touch it or like read maybe a chapter or two we shall see another one that I know I will not finish unless I just go for it is How Proust Can Change Your Life by Alain de Bottom this is a series of a collection of essays about Proust and so Alain de Bottom is a philosopher and he looks back at Proust's writing and his life I guess and is teaching us lessons about yeah how to become yeah how to change your life how to better your life and I think I've mentioned this before but it has some stuff like how to choose a good doctor how to enjoy a holiday why we shouldn't read too many books I should actually start with that one that would be a good one to start them up with wouldn't it <laughs> so I I'd like to, to to get to at least one or two of the essays another book that I feel a bit embarrassed about because I started it last year and I haven't touched it at all is the bilingual brain by Albert Costa this is the bilingual brain and what it tells us about the science of language and as someone who speaks many languages this was really interesting I read the first chapter it was so so technical because it's about the science of like tests that they've done on children and how like different sounds and and like different ways to put your mouth and how you your brain stores that and how it works and how it connects to other Thing. so if you can do this you can also do that so it's a very technical so I, I I read it really slowly because it's really short but I think yeah I'm literally 20 pages in but <laughs> I think it's a book that I really really want to get under my belt and I really want to learn more about it and I think I need to take time to read it but I just wanted to highlight it again because I yeah can't wait and if you're potentially interested in this kind of subject this might be one for you and finally, a book that I completely forgot I had because it's on a high shelf and I've stacked the book so it's like at the bottom so I can never actually see it is Mix Slash Other by Natalie Morris. This is Explorations of Multiraciality in Modern Britain. I always click Mix Slash Other so I saw this book advertised and I had to get it and by I had to get it I'm pretty sure I asked my husband to get it for my birthday last year. Literally haven't touched it yet. Embarrassing I know. So I just re remembered that I had that. So it's, oh, it's not even 200 pages. Oh God, maybe I should actually prioritize this one. But we'll see. I just wanted to mention it. I feel like it would work well under like the border category because I guess it's sort of about cultural borders. Like mix, mix slash other talks about it's basically two different things potentially so yeah I feel like there's a border in, somewhere in there so yeah so I feel like I have so many books so many good books I think to read so it's gonna be a really excellent month I'm sure of it and I'm gonna dedicate myself fully to nonfiction, except for The Count of Monte Cristo I have actually finished the first volume which is impressive I know it's taking me two months but there's almost 800 pages so I will be digging into the second volume. Yay! Which is also almost 800 pages. Um, so this will be one of the books that I will also be reading. But everything else will be 
nonfiction for sure. So hopefully I can read loads of these interesting books. I'm going to try to read one per category. It might be fun, you know, but I, I just go with a bit with my guts and how I feel at the time. I have quite a list of different, you know, about bookshops, about feminism, about um, science, about, you know, personal accounts, biographies. So I think it's going to be a really, really cool mix of things. And I'll, I'll just go with my guts. I'll trust myself. I'll enjoy the month. And I look forward to getting back to you to tell you which books I've read. I can't wait to know what books you're reading. Please let me know in the comments. That would be really great. If you have a recommendation, <laughs> I'm always adding them to my DBR, to my list, you know. And let me know if you've read any of these books that I've talked about. You know, which ones should I start with? Do you think I should start with why you shouldn't read too many books by uh, Alain de Botton? <laughs> Uh, let me know. As always, thank you so much for watching in Hasty Back. Bye!